Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to um, this college scholarship workshop. We appreciate, we've had a really nice response. So that tells us that this is certainly something that you're interested in. And having been a parent of a bunch of children, at about this time, we we're really worried about how we we're going to pay for whatever it is they chose to do. So, um, you know, my baby is 30. That was a while ago. But I think the anxiety is still the same. So, mahalo for being here. We, uh, first, let me introduce myself. I'm Mervlyn Kitashima parent, with Parent and Alumni Relations. And part of our work is to provide for you information that will help you through parent workshops and activities such as this to help you as parents, help your children be able to progress, not only survive, but thrive. So this is part of that effort. I do want to also introduce Lori Waraka, who's part of our staff. She is our parent coordinator, grades 7 through 12. So she takes care of things in the middle and high school. Again, that's why we're here with you tonight. And then we have Auntie Luana Chong up front helping us with registration and also some special guests that I'm going to introduce in just a few minutes. So let me explain to you this evening's agenda, which is very simple. We're going to hear from some experts in the field of college scholarships, most especially as they apply to Kamehameha, Native Hawaiians, and so forth. So that's first. And we've given four, uh, four of them some time. And then at the end of that time, will be question and answer time for you. Again, we're excited that you are here. Mahalo nui, and we know it's going to be beneficial to you. So let me introduce to you our presenters for this evening. We have uh, Mavis Shiraishi Nagao. Where are you, Mavis? Right here. Come, stand up. Mavis is a scholarship administrator with Keali Ipawahi Foundation. Her job is to encourage, student, encourage students to apply for scholarships, then make sure that they are processed properly, which is a really huge job. She has worked for KS for 25 years, is a graduate of UH Manoa, where she majored in Hawaiian studies, beautiful hula dancer. She dances with Na Puole Oliko Lehua, Kumuhula Lei Na Ala Kalamahaini. So Avis is here to represent Kelly Ipawahi Foundation. Next. We have Audrey Schumann, who is a program liaison and administrated, administrator with financial and scholarship services with Na Ho'okama. And you're going to explain to us Na Ho'okama in all of its detail and grandeur. Oh, glory. Yeah, absolutely. She has worked for KS for six years. Na Ho'okama is a KS program. Keli Pawahi is a Yes, KS program, but not KS program, so you're going to explain all that. She was born and raised in Kahalu'u, attended UH Manoa, but graduated from NYU. New York University, is that right? That's right. Okay, good. I guessed yeah. on that one. She paddles, considers herself a good bun dancer. Yee-hee. da 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 That's all I know. Thank you. This is Aubrey. And our third presenter here tonight is Stephen Morales, who has been working with youth and families in Hawaii for 30 years, although he has been with KS for only 20 years. He has served as a guidance teacher for middle school students at Aliamanu Nanakuli with the Malama Oke Ola program. And prior to returning to Kamehameha, he helps students plan and prepare for college while working with a program called Talent Search. Steve received a BN in communications from University of Hawaii at Manoa, earned an MED from Chaminade University, continues to volunteer his time helping agencies serving youth in and out of home care, assisting with college financial aid workshops, yay, that's good, you're here tonight, as well as providing seven habits of highly effective teens sessions to various groups. So, and Stephen is going to be here to uh, H. HCF Hawaii Community Foundation, which is another very huge kind of clearinghouse for, for, for scholarships. So again, big hands of applause for our three presenters. We also want to acknowledge a few other folks. We have our, some of our college, our, our counselors here tonight. 
uh, Alyssa Branfith, who is the Dean of Student Supports, and Ms. Alvina Lopez Chai. Lopez Chai, is that right? Yay, Lopez. And Alvina, you're 12th grade counselor? Oh, 11 and 12th grade counselor. Okay, and she's been, both of them have been here a long time and know a whole lot about this. So mahalo for being here. And we also have with uh, Sandra Kawahikawa. Sandra, where are you? Oh, here we go. And Sandra is a counselor with Kamehameha Scholars. And they provide post-high transition workshops for 11th and 12th graders. That's that white flyer that we gave you when you came in. So we're gonna start with Sandra, who's just gonna make an announcement. And then after Shendra, our first presenter will be Aubrey with Naho Okama. All right. Shendra, your turn. Is this in your way? Do you need that? Okay. All right. Aloha. Um, first, I wanted to uh, mahalo Par for um, in inviting us or inviting myself to be here with uh, amongst the 11th and 12th grade families. Just wanted to um, give a short, um, a short clip of our involvement with the uh, campus families. I had offered a fall Holomo Ohana that, ha that occurred back in October, as well as in November, and I just wanted to um, mahalo those families who attended. I also wanted to mention that in your packet, I had save a date, I have the um, upcoming spring Holomo Ohana coming in the in the April, in the month of April. So I have one for juniors and one for seniors. Um, Commitment House Scholars has always been serving the communities uh, from grade nine to 12, out statewide. And for this year, we are collaborating closely with the campuses because we are providing the counseling and services for the first year of college. And for us to strengthen that relationship with the student, we thought to offer these Ohana uh, workshops that is in conjunction with the college um, post high planning process. So I just wanted to take that opportunity to just introduce myself and to let you folks know that you, be, among the, those hundreds of emails you folks are receiving, I'm one of them. <laughs> so I wanted to mahalo you folks. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to clarify that a lot of people think KS Scholars is non Kamehameha students, and for the most part, I think that is, but this program in particular is actually geared towards Kamehameha students and helping them to be successful through their first year of college, right? Yeah. Shandra's program, yes, because there was a little confusion with that. Aloha. So I'm um, here on behalf of Noho Okama. Again, my name is um, Aubrey Schumann. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about the scholarship opportunity that Noho Okama provides for you. A little bit about Noho Okama itself. It is a need-based scholarship um, that can be applied, um, excuse me, specifically online. Uh, this past year, um, this past academic application year, we received about 3,600 applicants. Um, to which we awarded 2,200 applicants, a total of $13.8 million. So it allowed about an average award of $6,200 per student. So we do have a good about amount of money that we do try to divvy it out as best we can. So this upcoming year, um, our application opens up January, the first business day of January, so January 2nd. I do have up on the screen what our deadlines are, which is April 21st. It may sound like a large window, but it moves pretty quickly because since we are need-based, um, we rely a lot on your taxes. Most people don't file their taxes until maybe March, close to April, um, so they go into a two-month crunch. Um, one thing that we want to stress is it's a postmark date. So it doesn't mean I completed my application on the 21st and I'm mailing in all my documents on the 22nd. It means I completed my application and mailed in all my documents on the 21st. Um, so that is something we do want to stress, not only for the application itself, but for the required documents. Uh, what I wanted to run through really quick are the four basic steps it takes to do our application. The first one is the CSS profile, which again is an online-based application. Second one is college IDOC, which is sort of like the cover sheet of all your documents on where they're supposed to mail out to. 
Third step is um, required or supplemental documents. And then the fourth is net partners. These are um, the four very important steps to make sure your application is complete. For the application process of the CSS profile, um, again, being need-based, we are very reliant on your taxes. And not only your taxes as a parent, but if your Keiki goes if your Keiki does work and files taxes, we look for their taxes too. If you um, are a single parent with a, uh, a other significant others, Kalamai, I couldn't think of the word, um, but if you have a significant other that don't, doesn't file with you, um, we would also look at their taxes. So pretty much what we're looking at is taxes under the entire household. As it says there, not only for the applicant, but the spouses, parents, step parents, significant others. The most common mistakes that happen with our applications, believe it or not, is that people get their birth dates and their social security numbers wrong. They get really excited, I'm gonna submit my application, I was born October 5th, 2010. And it makes it all the way through the application, even to the review screen, and they don't catch it until all of a sudden you try to go into your iDoc screen to submit your application. You actually put in your birthday of October 7th, 1985, and it's like, bah, you're not here. Try again. Um, but the same thing goes with the social security number. One digit throws off your whole application to where you could do 575-75744 when it should be 576-75744. Um, and that one little Manini number puts your application back about two to three weeks. So you want to make sure that every time you see it pop up in your application, you want to make sure that those two specific numbers are right. Another one that is a very common mistake is the housing category. One of the questions that we do ask is while you're attending school, what is your housing option? Are you going to be living on campus, off campus, with parents, with relatives? These four things affect your award because if you live on campus, you have a certain budgeted amount. If you live off campus, you have to pay rent, but you're not living with family member, you have a certain budgeted amount. If you live with your parents, you are very lucky because that just makes it so much easier. So these are the mo two most common errors that can affect your um, application as well as your award. Things to remember about applying with College Board for Kamehameha Schools is our college code. Our college code is 0274. Um, why is this important? If you don't know our college code, it's very difficult to find it if you do a search. You could do Kamehameha Schools in the search, it'll be like, nah, I don't see it. You do financial aid Hawaii, nah, I don't see it. But if you know the four digit code, um, it just makes it that much quicker. So 0274, quickest way to get into our, um, to make sure that we receive your application and it doesn't go to uh, University of Southern California. Um, you want to give yourself about an hour, hour and a half to do the application. There's a lot of questions and a lot of them are very financially based, but they're not only about you as a parent, they're about your household, who's in your household, how much do you own property, um, including vehicles, do you own uh, real estate, do you have uh, leased real estate? We ask a lot of money-oriented questions. So we say to give yourself about an hour, hour and a half, depending on your situation, it may be 10 minutes, um, it may be two and a half hours. Um, so you definitely want to give yourself the time. A nice feature about our application, however, is there's a save and continue feature. There are a lot of applications that don't. You gotta sit there for the whole two hours and cram it out until it's like your application is gonna expire. What we do here is you get stuck on a question, you can save and continue, come back tomorrow with all your information and you won't have to re-enter like half of the information that you put in the day before. Our application does have a fee. There's a $25 application fee to submit for Kamehameha schools. College Board is a very common application process that a lot of schools use. Not only Kamehameha schools, but a lot of private schools use it. So if you do apply for Kamehameha Financial Aid, you could also apply for Berkeley. They use College Board. And you could apply for, uh, I'm not really sure if UH does. They may, possibly. 50-50 chance that they're, they're on there. Um, but uh, a lot of schools do use College Board. So, $25 is just to make sure that Kamehameha Schools gets your financial aid. If you do add schools on it, it's an additional $16 per school. So just know that you don't have to stick just specifically for us. You can choose all the schools you want. You'll just be charged for every additional school you add to it. 
our application fee waivers have a deadline of two weeks before our deadline. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so if you apply for your fee waiver on the 8th and our deadline was the 7th, most likely you won't get it. You will have to pay the $25. And they do give the options on the payment methods online. The next step is the IDOC. The IDOC cover sheet is, again, your cover sheet to make sure that all your documents are getting to the most important place. Um, and color my, my, my PowerPoint didn't quite make it into your folder, but I did provide a flyer that has most of this information. So I'm just sort of jetting through it really quick. A most common mistake that happens with the IDOC cover sheet is that people send us the instruction sheet on how to submit your checklist. It's tricky because when, as soon as you log in and it says uh, IDOC checklist instructions, people click it, print it, and send it in. And that's great, but that doesn't have your name. It has no clue what you're sending us. You want to make sure that you actually send us the checklist. Because then what we go off of to make sure that we have the right documents is the checklist you send us. Another one is sending the right documents to IDOC. IDOC has a lot of our tax documents. So almost everything related to tax, uh, non-tax filers, your actual taxes, schedules, W-2s, most things money-oriented, um, are to be sent to IDOC, not to Komehameha schools, even though we're the ones who are asking for it. If you send it to me um, in Komehameha, I will say thank you so much, and it will sit with me, because I don't forward it on. So you want to make sure that you do send the correct documents to the correct location. And sadly, that's a very, very common thing that happens to a lot of our applicants. The third thing is making sure that you mail to the right place. You could have your checklist and all your forms, and right on your checklist says mail to Chicago, Illinois. Um, and you'll still turn around and send it to me. And it'll be all complete and wonderful, but I'm, it's not my kuleana to forward it on. So you want to just make sure that you have the right mailing address when you do uh, forward your documents. Some required documents that are normally for IDOC, like I had mentioned, are taxes geared documents. We stress signing because if the document isn't, if taxes are not signed, we cannot use the information. So even you may file electronically and it says right there, do not sign. Um, that's fine for filing, but we need the signature to allow us to use the information. Um, so we do stress the signing. Other forms, again, that do need to go are W-2s, your schedules or 1099s, a 4506T form, which is an IRS uh, request form. It's a required document this year. What it does is if for some reason we need to ask for another set of your taxes, instead of us trying to chase you down to go and chase that down, and we could be really, really close to the deadline, instead of us stressing you out to find your documents, we can stress ourselves out and just go straight to the IRS and get our copies as needed. Another one that's very important is a non-tax filer statement. A lot of families will not have their kids complete one because they didn't file taxes. But that's the thing is they didn't file taxes, so it now becomes a required document. You want to make sure that if your kiki does do taxes, they submit other documents. If they don't do taxes, or even if you as a parent, you don't file taxes, you do complete a non-tax filer statement. Again, very important form, and it does have a tendency to get skipped. This um, slide is just to, again, oh, Mount Vernon, excuse me, Chicago, really close. Uh, but this is the location that we would send your tax documents and IDOT cover sheet. Also, again, stressing the postmark deadline of April 21st. Step three are other required or supplemental documents. Not only do we ask for your tax documents, but we also ask for confirmation of, yes, I understand I'm applying for commitment school scholarship, and yes, I'm actually continuing on to college. These documents would not be sent to College Board, IDOC. Um, so the best way to remember what gets sent where for our scholarship is anything tax or money oriented goes off to IDOC. Anything other, like verifications, uh, certification statements, actually does get mailed to Kamehameha Schools. We also have an authorization for release of information. What this is, it's almost like a uh, patient doctor authorization form. It's your student authorizing us to give a parent information. And believe it or not, it's one of our parents' favorite forms because they can roll around and be like, I'm calling to check if Gus did his documents, got everything in on time. And then we'll look in it in the application. If we don't see the authorization form, we'll be like, Kalamai, I need to speak to Gus. I cannot you know, give you information. Let me send you the form, though, and then you can call us whenever you like. 
so uh, we do ask for additional supplemental documents. Again, gearing tax or money oriented to IDOC, uh, all other forms to Kamehameha schools. College verification documents. We want to see where you're going. It doesn't necessarily have to be your first choice school. It could be I received my confirmation from UH, but I'm initially planning to go to NYU. We just need to see forward movement. And this is a required document. Um, generally look for admission, the admission application form, the actual acceptance letter if you do have it. Um, notification, it could be an email notification saying we received your application, you'll hear from us. Um, an actual schedule if you've already gotten your schedule or um, college transcripts or confirmation letters. And this is just reiterating where we send our other our supplemental documents. Again, deadline postmarked April 21st. Very important date for our Noho Okama scholarships. The fourth step is net partners. It is a tracking mechanism for you to make sure that you know what's going on with your application. Once you submit it and you think, okay, I'm Opal, um, you will want to make sure that we actually have your documents, that all your documents are signed. Uh, two weeks after we receive your submittal, you'll receive an acknowledgement letter saying, here is your access to get onto Net Partners. Here is your log on to get onto Net Partners. Go on to Net Partners and make sure your application is heading in the right direction. One feature that we're doing this year is our certification statement is electronic. So instead of having one paper that you got to make sure gets signed and we get it four or five times because you, you know, 100% sure it's done, um, it's a read and submit, read and click. Um, but it is done through Net Partners. Uh, it does have a deadline date of um, April 21st. And we stress this because since it is electronic, you need to give yourself that one whole day for your application to be submitted. So if you do your application on April 21st, because that's our deadline date, you're going to get your notification April 22nd to go on to Net Partners and do your certification. Your application will already be late. So you want to make sure that everything is done by the 21st, including giving yourself that one extra day to make sure the certification statement is done. And again, we do use uh, Net Partners to track your documents, track the progress of your application. There's a variety of people you can call for help to complete your um, College Board application. You can either go directly to College Board, and nice thing during um, application season is they're totally flexible to meet our time zone. So they are open, um, they're open 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and they stay open until 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So more likely you'll be able to get a hold of somebody there. If not, you can try locally at our Applicant Services Center, easy number 5348080 and they would be able to walk you through wherever you managed to get stuck or be able to check on your application to see if there's anything missing so some real quick tips that we like to encourage people who are looking to apply for the whole to start early you want to give yourself that buffer to make sure that you meet all the deadlines and that everything gets to where it needs to get to um, you want to take it step by step don't skim over it and think that you finish it. You want to make sure that you finish step one, two, three, four. If you have a chance, definitely review the checklist. We provide checklists for everything. What this checklist does is make sure before the deadline comes, you finish step one, two, three, and four. A mailing tip we strongly encourage is to do return receipt. The little green slip of paper costs a couple bucks more, but it's so much more saner to know um, when your documents get somewhere. You can totally track it, just like a UPS number. Ah, tracking number. And finally is to remember to check your status on Net Partners. Net Partners is totally going to become your new best friend. I think I, my flyer is on the left-hand side of your packet. It's a brown flyer. And then on the back, there's information about the Net Partners. We stress Net Partners because this is a new a new step for us. We're really encouraging trying to do things electronically. Um, on our flyer has the basic information on what would establish you or qualify you for our two scholarships we do offer. Other than that, I think that's all I have. So <laughs> where to find my scholarship? On the flyer, um, it has our website of www.fin, uh, let's try it again, www.ksbe.edu backslash finaid. Easiest way, however, just go onto the KSBE website and we have a button, financial aid. Takes you straight into our website. 
Um, it's actually a pretty easy uh, website to maneuver through. It's all tab friendly and we have forms all on front screens. Um, and if for some reason it becomes a little difficult, um, you're more than welcome again to call our customers, uh, yeah, our applicant services center, or ask the counselors, they're very familiar with it too. Um, we are out in the community um, on Wednesday nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays, mainly on the windward side or the leeward side if you are available, but otherwise we are in town uh, available from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, earlier you gave a number. You said there was 30-something like people applied, 20-something people awarded for an average call. And I missed that number. Sure. No problem. So um, our statistics from last year was that uh, 36,000 people. Wait. Is that right? No, 3,600. I was a little. One too many zeros. See? College did me good. Uh, it was 3,600 uh, applicants had applied, 2,200 had actually finally been awarded, a total of $13.8 mil $13 million, but the average award was 6,250 would have been the average award. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to call up Na Mavis at this time. Aloha, my kako. Okay, um, so I represent Kele Ipoahi Foundation. Uh, Kele Ipoahi Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are a support organization to the Kamehameha schools. One way in which we do that is we offer scholarships. Um, for us, our funding is totally different from the Kamehameha schools. Whereas Kamehameha schools has a budgeting process for their funds, our funds come from donations from the community, um, classes, alumni classes, organizations in the community agencies. They bring their donations to us. We set up endowments. The endowments are invested. The earnings that we get from those um, investments is what we award out for scholarships. Okay? So from year to year, the award amounts may vary depending on how the market is on that certain year. Okay? So the two programs that we administer are, is one for Kamehameha seniors exclusively, and then we have a public program, okay? So the um, internal process, which, which is for the Kamehameha seniors, it already opened. We did a presentation to all of the seniors through their guidance classes. They received a folder from us with all of the information in there. There was a flyer, a guidebook, um, a scholarship listing, and then on our public side, there was a flyer also and a pamphlet for them. The application closes on January 10. Now, this is for the application itself, and also there's another component where the student needs to submit letters of recommendation, okay? Those requests for letters of recommendation also need to be sent by the January 10 deadline, okay? The writers, okay, so the writers, who are writing these letters of recommendation, their deadline is January 17. Okay, so the request for the letters of recommendation from the student, it's done electronically, that request needs to go out by January 10. January 10, the, the system closes. The writers, though, will have the opportunity to submit their letters of recommendation until January 17. Okay. For the public side, that opens on February 5th and closes on March 24th. Um, yeah, March 21st, sorry. Okay. So again, the internal process ex is exclusive to KS seniors okay, on all three campuses, Maui, Hawaii, and Kapalama. There's a certain um, amount of scholarship funds designated per campus. For Kapalama, there's over 40 funds. Okay, so 40 funds, meaning there's not only 40 scholarships available, some of them have multiple awards per scholarship. Okay, um, again, totally separate from the KS budgeting process. They are required to submit their online application. Okay, and when we say submit, they need to click on the submit button. If they don't click on that submit button, their information is not sent to our system and we don't see them at all. Okay, so they need to submit that. They have the opportunity to um, register. They're setting up a register. They have to set up a login and a password. The login that they must use is their um, emua at ksbe.edu 
email address. That's how we validate that your student is a Kapalama student. Okay, so they have to use their EMUA address. The two letters of recommendation, again, one must be from a KS faculty, staff, person. Okay, the second one can be anybody outside in the community. So say your student plays intramural softball, whatever, in the community, but they have a KS coach out there. We will not accept that coach letter. We're looking for something other than, somebody other than their Kamehameha affiliation. Um, anybody that they've done community service with, um, a church, um, or organizations, agencies in the community. We're looking for somebody other than a Kamehameha person. We're already asking for a Kamehameha person to write them a letter of recommendation, that's why, okay? So those two. There are four essays that they need to submit to us and it's all done online, okay? The first three questions that they're gonna be asked are the same questions that will be on our public side for their um, application. So what we suggest for students to do is write their answers in a Word document and then cut and paste it into the online application. That way when our public application opens, they can use the same answer or they can revise it and then cut and paste into our public application, okay? Character limit is 2,500 characters. So every keystroke on the keyboard is a character. Period, a space, exclamation point, that's all counted as a character. So they're limited to 2,500, okay? Um, the, oh, I'm sorry, the last question um, is more of a listing. It's asking for all of the extracurricular activities that the student has participated in from their freshman to senior year. Okay, so it's not, a, not, it's not an essay question, it's just a listing. Freshman year participated in these things. Sophomore year participated in these things, okay? Um, we ask for official high school transcripts. This is done electronically. Within their online application, there's a button there that says, I give permission um, to KAPF to request my official transcripts from my registrar. They need to click that button. Okay, if they don't click that button, we cannot request their transcripts on their behalf. It saves them an extra step from going to the registrar, filling out the form and saying, can you send my transcripts to KAPF? Okay, we get it electronically, so we can dump it into our system and it's there. Okay, um, college acceptance letters, as soon as your, your senior starts getting college acceptance letters, we would appreciate a copy of that for our records, okay? If, um, if you don't want to send it, that's fine. It just makes it easier in the long run when they are awarded. Um, we have that on file already. Okay. There may be additional documents um, for the different funds. Each fund is different in criteria. They ask for different things. Um, so some of them may ask for additional letters of recommendation. There may be an, another essay question, um, or if they apply for our art um, scholarship, we ask for an art portfolio. Okay, so these are all within the online application itself. Okay. Selections and notification. Okay, so the selections are done by committee. Okay, when the committee members are given their packets, names, and any identifying information is redacted from the application. So the committee members do not know who they're reading. Okay, it's all done. They're just reading the essays, no identifying um, information on it. So it's done in a fair way. Everybody's equal across the board. Our notifications are done in May via the annual academic awards ceremony that's done here on campus. So until that time, nobody knows who's awarded until they come to the, the ceremony. Um, if your child is awarded a scholarship from us, they are given an award letter saying how much they're awarded. There is an agreement form within that packet which needs to be signed and returned to us within a specific time. If we do not 
receive that agreement form. We do not process for a check. The deadline comes, we don't have the agreement form, the scholarship is awarded to the next ranked student. So they, they lose out on it. And I'm terribly sorry about that, but we cannot hold on to our funds. We need to award it out. So just to let parents know, you folks need to be on the ball on your student because last year there were some students who did not sign the agreement form and we had to award it to the next person, okay? Since our awarding is separate from Kamehameha School's budgeting process, the student is available or eligible to receive both Kamehameha funds and Kele Ipoahi Foundation funds. For the pu public process, again, opens on February 5th, closes on March 21st. Everything is due on March 21st. Uh, application needs to be submitted. Letters of recommendation need to be submitted in. All supplemental documents, art portfolios, everything needs to be in our office by that date. Okay, it's a hard deadline. It's not a postmark. It's a hard deadline. Okay. Last year, there's always within the last two weeks before um, deadline, we have students scrambling and they're coming into our office. Can I get this in? Yes, you can. As long as we didn't lock that door and you can get your documents into us, we will accept it. As soon as the door is locked, that's it. Hard deadline. Okay. Um, for the public process, we have over 70 scholarship funds. Again, it's not only 70 scholarships. There are multiple awards for some of the scholarships, most of the scholarships. All the criteria is different for these scholarship funds, so you would need to read each of those scholarship descriptions, see what they're asking, see if your, um, your child is eligible for them. At the end of the, I think it's the third or fourth step of the application process, there'll be a listing with a checkbox for, of all of the scholarship funds available. The student just needs to click on the ones that they want to apply for. If there's um, a scholarship listing, um, Bruce T. and Jackie Mahi Erickson scholarship, if it says on the side of there, essay required, they click on the, um, the scholarship name and a box will fly out. It'll list the criteria again and there is gonna be an essay question that they need to type in right there. They can come back to it, yeah? at a later time. Within the scholarship listing that we have listed on our public site, this, the essay questions are all listed under the criteria. So they can look at the listing, see which ones they want to apply for, start writing their essays if an additional essay question is needed. Okay. Required documents, again, completed online application, the personal statement um, essays, the three are the same, yeah, as the internal ones. If the child is a senior this year, we'll again need um, official transcripts. If your child has applied for our internal process and has clicked the box to say we can get their transcripts, they do not need to submit another set of transcripts. Okay, we'll have that on file. Okay, if you're not sure, if the child is not sure, they can always call us up, we can check. Okay. If um, you have a student um, who's already in college, they can apply for these scholarships also. We will need to see official college transcripts. And what we mean by official is it needs to come directly from the institution to us. We won't take the online ones, we won't take hand-carried ones. Even if it's sealed in an envelope, we need to have it directly from the institution. Okay. College acceptance letters, again, we'll appreciate copies of those before deadline. Okay. Additional um, documents, again, letters of recommendation, a lot of them have, um, a lot of the funds have those. They have additional essays. For the funds that have criteria that say demonstrate financial need, we are asking for the student aid report from the FAFSA. Uh, the FAFSA is the general um, uh, tax document that most institutions use to determine financial need. Uh, you can start doing the FAFSA starting January 1st, 2014. You can complete it with estimated taxes at that point. For us at the foundation, we need you to complete the FAFSA 
with completed taxes. Okay, so you can start it with estimated numbers, but you need to go back into it, and before you submit the student aid report to us, you need to go back in, make sure that the numbers that are in there are coinciding with your filed taxes. On there, the student aid report, which is what we'll receive, there's a line in there, I forget what number it is, but it'll say already filed under taxes. If it says will file, we won't accept it. It has to say already filed, okay? The FAFSA is universal. I mean, most of the institutions um, use it. It stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So um, you can access it at fafsa.ed.gov, and the keyword here is free. There's other sites up. It's fafsa.com. They charge, I think, $79.99 for them to complete your FAFSA. They're legitimate, but again, this is a free form. So don't go to them. Don't, if it asks you to pay by credit card, you're at the wrong site. So FAFSA.ed.gov, but that information is on our website also, okay? Art portfolio, um, we do have uh, several, I think two funds that are art. Okay, so we need to see photos of original artwork that um, the student has done. Um, that artwork, that folder will not be returned to the student. Um, so those photos, once it's in our possession, it's, our, it's ours, it's part of our, um, your student's packet. Okay, for the public side, we do have a preference for Hawaiian. And the way that we do that is through the Kamehameha Schools Ho'olu Hawaiian Data Center. So if your student has not registered their Hawaiian ancestry through the data center, you need to start that now, okay? The process itself can take six to eight weeks depending on uh, how complicated um, the, the ancestry is. If there's an adoption, um, changes were made to birth certificates, those will all take time. So if you haven't done that, please contact them now and then you can start that process. Selections and notification, again, everything is done by committee. Different committees set up for different um, funds. Notifications for the public side is done in June. Again, the agreement form, they're gonna be mailed that. They need to sign and return that to us by the certain date. Um, distribution of checks is done in July. Checks are made out to both the student and the institution, is mailed to the institution. Institution will check if the student is full-time and meets the criteria um, that we have in our letter. If the student is registered for half-time or not what we say they should be, they will give us a call and then we'll let them know, okay, this scholarship is okay for half-time, it's okay to release. Or the student needs to be full-time, if they're only registered for nine credits, the check is returned to us, we contact the student, say, hey, what's up? You know, going full-time, part-time, you picking up another class, what? But we check with them first, okay? It's a one-time distribution. So this, the check is not split between a fall semester and a spring semester. If they're awarded $500 from us, the full 500 is sent to the institution at the beginning of the fall semester. Okay, these are our stats, okay? If you look at the Kapalama stats, it's not doing too well. There were 450 students last year. We only received 199 applications, and not what all the 199 completed the process, okay? Yeah, so that's why we want you parents to push your students to submit an application and complete the process, because there's money out there. And there's not only money from Kele Ipoahi Foundation, it's from Kamehameha Schools, Hawaii Community Foundation, Alulike, uh, Likoa'e. There's tons of scholarships available for Native Hawaiians out there. Okay. This is our contact information. Parents, please know that while we know your intentions are good and well and you're only looking out for your child, I cannot talk to you about your child's application. It's FERPA regulations, it's a student to agency 
uh, communication that we need to have. So if you want to know what your student has done or has not done, you need to talk to them first and then have them call us and then we can give them the information and then they can talk to you, okay? I cannot talk to you. And, and I've had parents call and say, but I'm the one footing the bill. <laughs> yes, you are. But you know what? That's not your application. That's your student's application, okay? And that's who I need to contact or talk to. That's who I need to communicate with. And it's a learning, it's a learning process for both student and parent. Yeah? <clears throat> Parents, you gotta, gotta hold back a little bit, and students, you guys gotta emu a little bit more. You guys not ma'a to you know, this kind, it's always mom or dad saying, okay, my son did this, da 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 da, -da. what do I do next? And then they tell you, right? But this time, cannot, okay? For next year, and it's a learning pr um, process for next year, because next year they're gonna be able to apply for the, our public process scholarships. They've already been through it once for this year. Next year, they're going to be a little bit more ma'a, yeah? I remember doing this. Our, our process doesn't change that much, and the um, application doesn't change that much either, okay? Next year, they're going to be ma'a. They can do it on their own. I get them already, okay? So parents, hold back a little bit, okay? And that's all I have, okay? Mahalo. All right, next up for us is Steve Morales, who's going to, which one is that? This one, this one, okay. All righty, Steve, there you go. You can start it from there. <laughs> Aloha, families. My name is Steve Morales. I am one of the college counselors here on campus. Uh, with the seniors, I have KEI to Z, so the second half of the alpha. So if Mr. Ocupenti is your child's counselor, then I am their college counselor. Um, because we've been implementing Naviance this year, and Mrs. Kekaulike has been stretched. She normally has the first half of the alpha. Uh, but Mrs. Lopez Chai, who is my hero, because she has stepped up this year and said, I will assist with the seniors. So she's been helping out with the college counseling, as well as to do the college counseling portion for this year with the junior class. So while I have Mr. Ocupenti or KEI to Z for seniors, for juniors, any junior parents, if your child um, is counselor is Mr. Fuller, I will be their college counselor as well. Okay, so just to make sure that we're clear on that. The other thing as well for senior parents, you, you can ask me anything. <laughs> You're like, there's no FERPA in my office, so you ask me, in fact, I pull their ear, you give me permission to pull their ear. Oh wait, this is being taped. I will not pull their ear hard. But the thing is, we want to make sure that you guys have the info when you need it. Our job, my job, is to help your child through this process. Because how many senior parents we have right now? Show of hand, please. Yeah, I bet you guys are going, oh my goodness, yeah? Let me tell you first and foremost, with the Naho Okama, yeah, that's a lot of hoops you're going to have to jump through. But at the same time, please be assured, and junior parents as well, we will have a senior guidance with a Nahu Okama representative coming up to take them through the process. Now, I'm glad that, that um, we kind of saw some of the numbers for Kelly Pawahi as well as Nahu Okama. We always want to increase the application process. So last year, uh, myself, Mr. Lee, and Mr. Silver, who were the senior counselors, we were working nonstop with students applying for the Naho Okama. And that will be the same thing. So you can see that there's a lot of documentation that you're going to have to send in. So if you have any questions, you can call me direct. If you want to make sure the documents are correct, you can have your child come to me, and I will verify. Is this the correct, is this your IDOC? Yes, is this the cover sheet? I will make sure and work with your child to make sure that everything gets sent in on time. You can already see that if they do Naho Okama on the 21st, they're behind because of the change with that certification statement. So we have to make sure, parents, uh, seniors especially, that we finish Naho Okama. It opens January 2nd, right? Let's get started as soon as possible. 
so that we'll well before that April due date so we can get everything in the mail for them. Kili'i Pawahi Foundation as well. They stood right here, showed a different PowerPoint to your child as well, went through what has to happen. And so again, junior parents, we will continue to offer this um, as well too for next year. So senior parents, they got the info. They know what needs them. They even got a folder. If your child has not shown you a folder, <laughs> I'm going to say what you need to do. But I do have some extras, um, only a few, a few handfuls. So if you have not seen it, they cannot produce it. Please send them to my office for some additional counseling. And then I will make sure that they have the documentation that they need. Now, for seniors who've been stopping by, and this is a real important time for them, because we've been telling them in senior guidance, we have turned a major corner. When we met with them last year's juniors, we're talking college. Who's on your radar? What do you want to major in? What are you looking at? So that at the beginning of this year, senior year, we should have that list already of colleges. You should have an idea where you want to apply. And we were here with them, um, when was it, uh, a couple weeks ago. If I was, no, it was before Thanksgiving, where we said, look, at this point, you, maybe you haven't finished your, your, your college apps, but you need to know your colleges and you need to know how to access those applications. Because we're already moving into, as you can see, scholarships and financial aid. They need to be working on or sending their college applications. Junior parents, this time of year, your child needs to know and be read, at least be, have, um, have completed their college apps, preferably completed their apps. Because we do have some seniors who've already received their, um, their acceptance letters from schools. So again, to be on track, make sure they know what colleges and have access to the application so they can get that done. So that again, we can do work on the Naho Okama. Kili'i Pawahi. We've been telling seniors, look at how the year is going so far. They came in, graciously met with our, our seniors, talked to them this presentation. But look at it. They, when you think about how much time we have left, this week is instruction. Next week is finals. And then after that, we're on Christmas break. We come back, teachers come back on the 8th, January 8th. Your child's first day back is on the 9th. Senior parents, on the 9th, we will be having one more large group guidance in here where Kili Ipawahi will come in one more time because when does the application close, Kili Ipawahi? The 10th. So there's not a whole lot of time. They need to do it. They need to do it now so that they can go beach and play and relax during Christmas break because if not, there's a whole lot of work that needs to happen. Um, and again, you saw the numbers based on last year, right, of how many actually completed. Of course, we want to do better. That's why we bring them in. Um, well, we, we, we invite the, the speakers in to talk about the, the scholarships, why we're pressing this. But again, with such a quick turnaround time, we want to ensure that they're going to get this done. So again, Naho Okama. My, my office will be open to anyone who wants help um, through the process, as well as we want to make sure that for the Kele Ipawai, the senior scholarships, please encourage your child to finish that, um, the, the application process if they need help. Again, irregardless of Alpha, please come and see me. Okay, let's get to this. Hawaii Community Foundation. Um, yes, I am not a HCF, H, HCF representative, but this is the same um, presentation that they did with our seniors. And because we've been working with it for a while, I felt like, yeah, I, I think I, I got a pretty good handle on this. I can do this. What I love first and um, foremost, they've increased their scholarships. I think last year they had a um, little bit over 160. They have over 180 scholarships this year. I didn't realize that they are the third largest private provider of post-secondary scholarships. I mean, the third largest in the state. So we get over $4.1 million in scholarships. Last year, look at the amount, just under 1,500 students received at least one scholarship. And man, that is generous, right? An average scholarship award was $2,000. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the supporting documents that will be required of them. So they are going to need to make sure they have that personal statement. That's just part of the application. So if you go online, you'll see, and pretty much it's 
Um, what are your post-secondary plans and, and kind of generic things like that. They will have to be submitting that SAR, that going to see, again, junior parents. Financial aid is acronym driven, as I've seen, you guys are seen already, right? Senior parents, right? You do the FAFSA to get your SAR. On the SAR is your EFC. Make sure you do the CSS profile because IDOC needs to be sent. Okay, it's acronym driven, so start learning it now. Some senior parents are like, yeah, I know this, yeah, I got it, but so the rest of you need to know this. The whole reason you do the FAFSA is for that, to get your SAR. Pretty much when you hit submit on your FAFSA, you can upload your SAR to check out what is your EFC, the expected family contribution. And you want to save that because it will be electronic because that's what you have to upload to the Hawaii Community Foundation. There's no hard copies of anything. Everything is 100% electronic. So personal statement, it'll be a please fill it in right here. They're gonna to need to be able to upload or download, whatever is the term, I don't know, that SAR from the FAFSA. And then, of course, their transcripts. The transcripts must show seven semesters of work. So that's from the first semester of their freshman year to this semester. Now, we are trying to get that so that KS Connect will be able to show the seven semesters um, before the due date. If not, there are other options as to how they'll be able to get that electronically. So we'll be talking about that a little bit more. But these are the required documents. Now there's some that are optional, but if you see that little asterisk, these will be required by some of the specific, some specific scholarships within the Hawaii Community Foundation. For example, letters of recommendation. Now, just like Kili'i Pauahi, they'll be asking for minimum two letters of recommendation. One from someone affiliated with Kamehameha, preferably a teacher or a counselor. The second one almost always is one from someone not affiliated with the school. This is why when I sit down and I talk with the students as juniors, what are your summer plans? Are you volunteering? Are you involved in the church? Because I, what I, or are you working? And the whole reason why I'm asking these kind of questions, well, one of the reasons is, are you gonna have a letter of recommendation from someone not affiliated with Kamehameha Schools? Junior parents, if your child is not doing any volunteer work, this is the time to get them started. Look at doing something during Christmas. Um, keep doing it whenever they can during breaks, during summer, when we come back. Because especially along the lines of colleges, colleges are looking for consistent, committed service. Not just one-time shots. Yeah, I went to the beach, I went to clean them up. No, they want consistent, committed community service. We've had colleges even come down. I think you guys have heard this. I've used this line. Colleges have told us, yeah, we see what students are putting on, on, their, on their applications. Went to this beach cleanup one time. We know what they're doing. Just trying to pad their, their application. They want consistent, committed community service. And again, if they have to work, hey, that shows that they're at least um, trying their best to help their family out or at least trying to make ends meet senior year, a letter from their boss or supervisor is good. Um, our board, this is where a lot of our borders struggle because either they're not able to do other things, getting a letter from someone not affiliated with Kamehameha is tough. So again, junior parents, kind of food for thought next year. Senior parents, help your child think. Who would that second letter, especially because it has to be someone not affiliated with Kamehameha, who could that possibly come from? Um, some do have specific essays as well too. Um, for example, there might be a Native Hawaiian princess scholarship, might something, how do you as a Native Hawaiian female feel about, and then they, they'll give you the prompt. So one thing that I encourage juniors to do is go check it out. Look at the scholarships. You won't be able to apply, but look at which ones require a specific essay. Don't necessarily write to that essay because the prompt may change next year, but at least you'll be ready so that when it opens, I'm going to go straight, I'm going to check this one out and see what I need to write about. Your SAT and ACT scores, again, because it's electronic, you want to make sure that you have that ready to upload, so you either have to scan it or make sure you have an electronic copy. Oh, and by the way, letters of recommendation, if I can come back to that. What they will need to make sure is they have the name, correctly spelled, of their recommender, their title, as well as their email address. 
because as they're doing the application online, that's what they're going to put in, and then HCF will send an email to their recommender. You have been listed as a recommender for student's name. If this is correct, please submit the letter of recommendation. So no hard copy. The recommender will get an email. They do a cut and paste of that letter, submit it, and then it'll go to HCF. Okay, what are some helpful tips? Definitely start early. You can see it opened up. Senior parents, encourage your child, check it out, get in there. Look, start looking at the, the different types of scholarships that they offer. Definitely you want to have that personal statement prepared. Again, it's, very, it's a very simple, basic personal statement. It, it gives you the prompt right there on the first page. What they're looking for, again, is something well written. It's not so much about what you say, but you want to make sure that it is well written. Um, definitely you want to start saving all of your documents or make sure you have it in some type of a file. So your student aid report, right, from your FAFSA, your personal statement. So save everything, start some kind of electric file, whether you call it scholarships or something like that. Because again, everything is electronic, needs to be uploaded. Cannot emphasize this enough, and this is something we continue to tell seniors, you do not pick your recommender the day you need the letter of recommendation. You should get your ear pulled if you do that. I don't care if that's on tape, you should. The thing here, we tell students, you gotta give your recommender at least four weeks notice. So one of the things that when we came back this year, we were telling seniors, secure. And that's the thing that I keep, I keep would put, secure your recommenders. Um, this year, some teachers were just overwhelmed real quick. Some have a specific number, and once they reach that number, they won't write anymore. So again, the idea is try and get early. Try and get it early. You do not want to be asking for letter recommendation again the day it is due. So because it has opened already, seniors should have asked their, their recommenders for permission. If not, again, parents, please follow up. Do you have your recommender secure? And again, preferably one affiliated with Kamehameha and someone, the second, preferably not affiliated with Kamehameha. Um, and of course, definitely organization is key. Um, senior parents, again, if you've already had a student go through this, you know what it's about. Junior parents cannot emphasize that enough. Keep things organized. Okay. The, on their website, they have the frequently asked question page. We found that very useful as well. Um, sometimes students will come in, Mr. Morales, what is this? <laughs> Let's just look in the website, see if that's already been answered. And whatever, if it has not, we have a contact person as well to at HCF that we can go to. Okay, this year what is the changes? They have a priority deadline. So if they can get everything in by January 31st, right on. Because number one, they beat that final deadline rush. They have the opportunity to have everything reviewed. Have you sent the correct um, student aid report? Is your transcript current one? Again, which includes seven semesters which would be the first semester of this year. Um, and then there's time for them to receive notification from HCF if anything is incorrect. So we definitely want to stress meeting that January 31st date, that, and again, so that they can breathe, they can relax, and they can get notification if they are missing anything. And of course, there it is, the opportunity to make revisions and to resubmit. Uh, here's some, a quick example of different scholarships that are administered by Hawaii Community Foundation. You can tell like that Ka'iulani, the Home for Girls Trust, that is one that would have a specific essay that you'd need to write to. I love the two new ones that they've added at the bottom, the Guy Toyama Memorial Scholarship, and especially what I like about that one, it's renewable. So not just a one-time shot, something that they can continue to get. And of course, that, that bottom one as well, too. So again, if you were to go online, you want to check out the eligibility, um, or, or yeah, what is the criteria for that particular scholarship to see if your child is eligible. OK, so again, important date. So it did open. Priority date, January 31st. Oh, I don't like showing final deadlines, but because <laughs> then they wait for that, yeah? So final deadline is February 2nd. How about we do that? No, let's go second. Yeah? 
There's no zero over there. Two days after the priority. <laughs> don't wait till the 20th. Because you know your child will, right? No, don't tell them. Tell them it's the 31st. That way they get it done. And then, yeah, keep calm and apply for scholarship. So there's some contact right there. And I think in your, in your packet, you actually have the contact person's name in there, Ms. J.D. Nehia, who is a proud graduate of Kamehameha as well, too, and would be willing to answer um, any questions that you have as well. Um, again, I, I called her earlier and asked her for some uh, pieces of advice. She said, Steve, make so Okay, so you will not be able to pick what scholarships you want to apply for. Okay, you, you do not pick. They pick for you. So what you want to do, her advice is you check them out. Okay, because some do have specific questions about the scholarship. For example, uh, let me go back just a little bit. Maybe the, the guy Toyama might ask something, what school do you want to go to, major in, and or... What area of sustainability are you interested in? So scholarships will have questions that you have to answer. So her advice was, make sure you don't skip anything. Answer all the questions for any scholarship you feel that you are eligible for. Answer them all. Make sure that you do that appropriately, because then they will notify you, here are the scholarships you're eligible for. So if you just try to get it done half an hour because you want to get to the beach or you just kind of don't really read it thoroughly, you may miss out on scholarships, at least completing um, the, the information for specific scholarships that you might have been eligible for. So please go through them, um, the scholarships. Make sure you're answering any questions that come up on this screen about it to ensure that that would be one that they would make sure that you're in the pool to apply for. Okay, other than that, that's it. I am, pow. <laughs>